In May 2025, China launched a secretive operation that sent shockwaves through the global tech and military world. Known as the Thunder Operation, it wasn't just a crackdown on illegal traders. It targeted an entire hidden supply chain of rare earths flowing secretly to the United States. These materials aren't just minerals. They are, honestly, the lifeblood of modern technology. And now, China was tightening control like never before. Who is behind the secret resale of these rare earths? And what does this mean for the United States, which depends on them for everything from stealth fighters to high-end electronics? The answers are more shocking than most people realize. To understand why this matters, we first need to see why rare earths are so critical. Their role is much bigger than most people imagine. Let's break it down. Rare earths are tiny elements, but their impact is massive. Think of them as the vitamins of modern technology. Without them, our world would grind to a halt. Smartphones, electric cars, satellites, wind turbines, and even military equipment all rely on these materials. Every stealth fighter in the sky, every GPS signal guiding a missile, every high-capacity battery storing energy for your electric car, they all need rare earths to function. Why are they so important? because rare earths have unique magnetic, luminescent, and electrochemical properties that almost no other material can replace. For example, neodymium magnets make your smartphone speakers and headphones possible, while yttrium helps create stealth coatings on military jets. In short, whoever controls rare earths holds the keys to the future of technology and strategic industries. Now that we understand why these materials are indispensable, it's clear why one country, China, dominates the market and why the world is watching every move they make. When it comes to rare earths, China isn't just a player, it's the king of the game. Right now, China produces about 70% of the world's rare earths and processes over 90% of them. That means almost every high-tech material that relies on rare earths is touched by Chinese production at some point. China's dominance isn't just in mining, it controls refining, processing, and high-purity extraction, the most critical parts of the supply chain. With nearly half of the world's proven rare earth reserves, around 44 million tons, China has a near monopoly on the minerals that power modern technology. For comparison, imagine if one country controlled almost all the oil in the world. That's the level of influence China has in this sector. With this level of control, the world's dependence on China is enormous, especially the United States, whose military and high-tech industries rely heavily on Chinese rare earths. Let's look at just how vulnerable they are. The United States is a global military and technological powerhouse, but there's a critical vulnerability most people don't realize. It's dependence on China for rare earths. Up to 87% of the U.S. defense industry's supply chain relies on Chinese processed rare earths. That's not just for smartphones or electric cars. It's for fighter jets, missile guidance systems, advanced radar, and even nuclear submarines. In 2023 alone, the United States imported nearly 10,000 tons of rare earths from China. Without them, the high-tech backbone of America's military would falter. To put it in perspective, think of the F-35 stealth fighter. Every jet needs around 417 kilograms of rare earths, enough to match the weight of two adult brown bears. The engines, sensors, and radar stealth coatings all depend on these elements. If the supply chain falters, even a single plane could become little more than a pile of metal. This isn't just about aircraft. Nuclear submarines need up to 4.2 tons of rare earth materials for sonar and propulsion systems. Missiles, satellites, and high-capacity batteries, all of them rely on rare earths refined and processed in China. In essence, China controls a chokehold on the materials that make U.S. high-tech and military power possible. This delicate balance held for years. But in 2024, the situation changed dramatically when trade tensions sparked a series of events that threatened the United States supply chain. And that's where our story gets even more intense. In April 2024, the delicate balance of global rare earth supply was shattered. President Donald Trump announced reciprocal tariffs on more than 180 countries, with China hit hardest. Its goods taxed at a staggering 34%. This wasn't just a trade dispute, it was a shockwave that sent ripples straight to the heart of China's high-tech exports. China's response was almost immediate. Within 48 hours, Beijing rolled out a series of countermeasures, the most critical being export controls on seven categories of medium and heavy rare earth materials. In one decisive move, China effectively cut off the United States from its most crucial supply of strategic minerals. This wasn't just a business decision. 
It was a strategic maneuver that directly threatened United States high-tech industries and military production. Imagine relying on a single supplier for the engine of your fighter jets, and that supplier suddenly locks the gate. That's exactly what happened. From stealth fighters to advanced electronics, the United States faced the possibility of shortages that could disrupt everything from national defense to cutting-edge technology development. With China blocking direct exports, the United States scrambled to find alternative sources. But as we'll see next, even new suppliers couldn't bypass China's control over processing and refinement. Facing a sudden cutoff, the United States didn't sit idle. It began exploring alternative sources of rare earths, turning to countries like Australia, Ukraine, and South Korea. On the surface, it seemed like a smart plan to diversify suppliers to reduce reliance on China. But there was a major problem. These countries could mine rare earths, but they couldn't process them to the high purity standards needed for United States military and high-tech industries. Refining rare earths isn't simple. It's a complex chemical and metallurgical process that takes years of experience, advanced technology, and precise control. Even if the United States imported raw rare earths from abroad, many of these materials had to be shipped back to China for processing before they could be used. In other words, the bottleneck remained. China's control over refinement and high purity extraction meant that, despite the global search, the United States couldn't truly bypass Chinese dominance. It's like trying to build a supercar without access to precision engineered parts. You might have the raw metal, but without the machinery and expertise to turn it into working components, the car remains just a pile of metal. For the United States, rare earths were the high-tech parts, and China held the machines. With direct imports blocked and alternative sources still reliant on China, the United States turned to a more secretive strategy, using third countries as a middleman. And that brings us to South Korea's surprising role in the global rare earth chain. When the United States couldn't bypass China directly, it turned to a clever but risky workaround using third countries as middlemen. South Korea quickly became a critical hub in this hidden supply chain. Companies like Samsung began transporting rare earth oxides to the United States, but not in the way anyone expected. Some of these rare earths were disguised as harmless materials, cosmetic raw ingredients for example, so they could slip past export restrictions and customs inspections. In reality, roughly 37% of South Korea's imported rare earths ended up fueling United States military and high-tech industries. Samsung alone reportedly moved around 320 tons of these strategic materials, hidden in plain sight under legal cover. This gray network shows just how complicated the global rare earth game has become. South Korea, while appearing to be just a consumer, effectively acted as a secret gateway allowing Chinese rare earths to reach United States military factories indirectly. It was a sophisticated maneuver, but one that didn't go unnoticed for long. By the first quarter of 2025, China's customs officials began noticing something unusual. South Korea's imports of rare earths had surged by an astonishing 137% compared to the same period last year. But there was a puzzling detail. The growth of South Korea's domestic industries, batteries, chips, magnets, was barely 5%. The numbers didn't add up. Where was all that rare earth actually going? The answer was clear to Chinese authorities. Much of it was being secretly funneled to the United States. This wasn't small-scale smuggling. It was an organized, large-scale gray market involving carefully disguised shipments and complex transshipment routes. For example, gallium, another strategic mineral critical for semiconductors, was being packed under false labels, routed through third countries, and quietly sold at high prices to U.S. military contractors. To tackle this, China began a multi-layered response. Large South Korean companies were publicly named and warned against circumventing export controls. Chinese media exposed major smuggling cases, showing the full black market chain packaging name changes, third country transshipment, and false declarations of use. Essentially, China was mapping the hidden network and signaling that the gray channels would no longer be tolerated. South Korea wasn't the only country involved. The gray chain had multiple links, including unexpected players like the United Kingdom. Let's examine how the UK fit into this complex network. The gray market for rare earths wasn't limited to South Korea. The United Kingdom also emerged as a critical and less obvious link in the chain. In the first quarter of 2025, the UK's imports of rare earth magnets from China surged by 40%. But here's the catch domestic manufacturing demand accounted for only 15% of that total. 
So where did the rest go? The evidence suggests that a significant portion of these rare earths flowed to U.S. military factories, indirectly fueling the production of advanced weaponry and defense systems. In other words, the U.K. acted as a transit point in a complex network designed to bypass China's direct export controls, much like South Korea. While the U.K. publicly complained about slow export approvals from China, behind the scenes it was likely part of the gray chain facilitating U.S. access to strategic materials. This multi-country network highlights the sophistication of global rare earth trafficking. It's not a matter of illegal smuggling in small quantities. It's a highly organized system involving major corporations, transshipment routes, and careful disguising of materials. The stakes are enormous because these minerals aren't just industrial, they're strategic, powering the weapons and technology that define national security. Rare earths aren't just industrial, they are critical to the backbone of the United States military. Without them, advanced weapons and defense systems simply can't function. Take the F-35 stealth fighter, for example. Each jet requires about 417 kilograms of rare earths, roughly the weight of two adult brown bears. Yttrium is used in its stealth coating to avoid radar detection, while gadolinium is critical for engine blades to withstand supersonic heat. Now look at nuclear submarines. A single Virginia-class attack submarine can require up to 4.2 tons of rare earths. Herbium in sonar systems allows crews to detect faint underwater sounds, while rare earth permanent magnets and propulsion systems enable silent navigation. Without these minerals, submarines would lose stealth capabilities and become highly vulnerable. The problem isn't theoretical. If China were to completely halt exports, the Pentagon's own simulations suggest most United States weapons production lines would stop within three months due to material shortages. F-35 SS could become nothing more than expensive scrap. Submarines could regress to World War II era capabilities, and missile systems might fail to meet operational requirements. Rare Earths are the invisible lifeblood of America's defense infrastructure and without them, the consequences are, well, catastrophic. Faced with the risk of being cut off from China's rare earths, the United States tried to find workarounds, but the challenges were far greater than most people realize. One idea was deep sea mining, targeting mineral deposits thousands of meters below the ocean's surface. In theory, it sounded futuristic, like mining on another planet, but in practice, it's a technological nightmare. The seabed targeted was nearly 5,500 meters down, where water pressure and conditions rival the extreme challenges of a moon landing. Even with modern technology, this operation remains decades behind China's expertise. The United States also looked to overseas sources, Greenland, Ukraine, and Australia. Each came with massive obstacles. Greenland's rare earth deposits are mixed with radioactive waste, making extraction and processing extremely expensive, up to $300 per ton, far above what the market can bear. Ukraine claims vast reserves, but 80% lie in areas controlled by Russia and are practically inaccessible. Even in Australia, raw mineral sands still require China's patented technology for refinement, creating yet another bottleneck. Rebuilding a full domestic rare earth industry in the United States is possible, but it comes at an enormous cost, at least $250 billion and a decade of sustained effort. Considering the current economic and debt pressures, this is a monumental challenge, arguably harder than constructing 100 aircraft carriers. Without immediate alternatives, the United States remains heavily dependent on China, highlighting the strategic power embedded in these tiny elements. China isn't leaving anything to chance. Beyond cracking down on smuggling, Beijing has implemented a full process traceability system covering every stage of rare earth production, circulation, and export. Every company handling these materials must report real-time data to a national platform, tracking every gram, every transaction, and every shipment. This isn't just bureaucracy, it's strategic control on a global scale. With this system, gray channels through third countries are effectively blocked. Disguised exports, false declarations, and covert resales become nearly impossible. Sensitive materials, whether for high-tech industry or military use, stay under strict Chinese oversight. In other words, China now has eyes on the entire rare earth supply chain, from the mine in Inner Mongolia to the components in a United States fighter jet. This level of control gives China unparalleled leverage. The United States and other countries can no longer rely on indirect or secret channels to secure these strategic resources. Every shipment is accounted for, every diversion detectable. 
the rare earth game has shifted, and China clearly holds the winning hand. China's thunder operation is more than just a crackdown on illegal smuggling. It's a strategic reshaping of the global rare earth market. With full traceability, strict export controls, and a crackdown on gray channels, China has effectively tightened its grip on the minerals that power the world's technology and military power. For the United States, the implications are serious. From F-35 stealth fighters to nuclear submarines, almost every advanced weapon system depends on Chinese rare earths. The gray market is shrinking, alternative sources remain limited, and the Pentagon's reliance on China has never been more apparent. In short, the future of high-tech industries, and even national security, may now hinge entirely on China's next moves. Understanding these strategic shifts isn't just for policymakers or military experts. It affects every tech-driven industry and every consumer who relies on modern technology. Stay informed, stay ahead, and don't miss out on our future deep dives into global strategic developments. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a critical update. The rare earth game has changed, and the world is watching China's next move.